Hi, just a brief message here before I dive into the video proper. Long story short, um, I had a bit of a disc failure and it chewed up a lot of the video that I was working on at the time. Um, so highly annoying, but there's more than enough here, I think, to um, give you the flavour of what I was after. We're just missing some gems from towards the end, um, but maybe I'll do a part two um, if the mood takes me again. In the meantime, uh, do enjoy this, and I've saved something very special for the end. Um, so either watch everything or skip to there, and I'll, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Hello, harmonic people. I'm excited about this. Um, I've got a book here that I've known about almost since I started taking harmonica seriously. And it is the first instructional book oops, on blues harp that was written and published. Uh, it's written by Tony Little's son, Glover, the first. <laughs> um, and I've heard all sorts of stories about this book. All sorts of... Uh, Myths and Legends. For a long time, this was the only blues harp instructional book that you could buy. Um, I don't know who did the next ones. Gindick, maybe. Uh, obviously, Barrett came along at some point. Anyway, loads and loads of people of a certain vintage have uh, strong <laughs> memories of this, and they like to talk about it. And, you know, I've... I've never had my hands on one until now. So, the reason this is so infamous, is, there's two reasons. Uh, the first is the incredibly, I don't know how, how you'd call it, hip, counterculture-y, jazzy way it's written. Um, there's lots of slang, lots of uh, euphemisms and stuff. You'll find out in a minute anyway. And the other one is that the information in it is hugely questionable in many, many places. Um, but having said that, and I'll say this up front, it is surprising just how much good information is still in here. Uh, it's great. Um, I'm glad it wasn't the book that I had to learn from. But it's really good. Honestly, this thing has entertained me so much. All right. First thing is, loads of cool pictures. Look at that. Sunny boy going for it. Uh, you probably picked up this book because you heard the sound of m mouth harp blues and got turned on. Different meaning of the word turned on than we traditionally use uh, these days. And absolutely wonderfully here. I didn't realise until I got this book uh, to help you understand some points which just can't be explained in words. Folkways have released a um, an instructional record and it really will, will have been a record at the time. And I'll tell you what, the incredibly cool thing is it's on YouTube. So I'm going to put a little slice of that in uh, here. What you need is more air, more forcefulness. You really got to do it hard. Don't worry about jamming your harp. Just try it. It should sound like this. Now this is probably the most frustrating part of playing blues harp. It's going to take a long time to get this. Once you get it, you wonder why you had such a hassle doing it. But in the meantime, the only way you're going to get there is you just keep practicing and keep doing it. Just keep trying it over and over again. Eventually it'll get, get to you. You'll get to it. And you both get together. Um, this is good. The earliest evidence that I've heard of the harp being used as a solo or lead instrument were the recordings made by George Bullet Williams. Now that is a player who doesn't get talked about much. Really. I, I think I've only heard... The only person I've heard mention... Bullet Williams is Felisco. Um, I'm going to put a little clip in. You know the 
All right, and uh, <laughs> it says here, bear in mind this is 1965, uh, Williams is probably dead or insane now since he had a habit of drinking shoe polish strained through bread. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> Sonny Boy 2. Sonny Boy 2 had a fantastic, groovy, splendid and delicious technique. Well... Accurate <laughs> and beautifully put. There's a really, really torturous paragraph here. And this is something that blues harp instructors struggle with. Uh, describing cross harp or different positions and how it works is difficult. But this, <laughs> but this paragraph here is just absolute torture. Uh, the relationships between the tones are the same in a marine band harps, no matter what they, key, no matter what they key. An A harp, for instance, would be set up like this: one hole below A, draw B; two hole below C sharp, draw E, uh, and then, and so the rest of the way. This is the same for all keys. You can just skip a tone between the blow and the draw notes in the second and third holes. Repeat the draw note in hole two as a blow note in hole three, and start the complete octave as blow note in hole four. Simple. It's not simple. Tongue blocking, right? He mentions it. And he also mentions that he's a pucker player. Uh, primarily. But when he's describing tongue block here, he's encouraging you to put your tongue... Actually, sorry, it's reversed there. Put your tongue on the other side of the mouth than I recommend. And that's cool. I do that on the one hole. And other players in uh, genres other than classic Chicago blues do it as well. But the whole it's missing the point, right? The reason you tongue block to the left is because when you take your tongue off, that's where the groovy chord sounds are. Okay, let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Here's three blind mice. <laughs> Just awesome. Um, I hope my enthusiasm for this is coming across because I'm just loving this. Uh, this is this is ridiculous. Okay. Um, as far as breathing goes, just do what comes naturally. You'll find that the harp. You'll find that you may be doing some breathing around the harp, some through it, some through your nose. Just let your body take care of it. The only real thing you can do about your breathing is to stop smoking. <laughs> I mean, you're on your own, kid. That's what he's saying there. I don't want to talk about breathing. <laughs> Just stop smoking. Um, it's at least 134 times easier to bend a draw note than a blow note. 134 times. I mean, I guess he's done the maths, but he's wrong. It's not easier or more difficult it's the same technique it's exactly the same technique uh, there aren't any shortcuts play as often as you can but i don't mean to sit down and work out six hours at a time it'd be better to play for 15 minutes four times a day than for an hour once a day if you try and do too much at once you get to a point where everything sounds frozen mush sounds like frozen mush clattering through your neighbor's skylight Learning to play shouldn't be a race or an endurance test. The main idea is to ball. Uh, you've got to work some so that you can ball. But uh, if you let it get to where it's all work and no kicks, you're missing the whole point of making music. So apart from the uh, bizarre uh, phrasing there, I tell people that first day. That is so important. That's good, good Solid advice. So that's about where uh, my disc decided to start rebelling against me. But I have added on to the end here um, some photographs from the very end of the book, which are reproductions of God knows where these things would have been published. You'll see in a second. But I just thought they were so, <laughs> they were so funny uh, and so charming that uh, I wanted to share them with you. So uh, just to wrap this up, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you next Friday.